Check out our latest coffee from Costa Rica at monkeyworksus.com. All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep. It's 321 2024 as we get into the deets. Uh, we're going to peel this banana back this morning and take a look at what's going on relative to the EU and the Middle East. Uh, I am seeing a lot of indicators that uh, this is, is very unlikely an exercise happening or a rotation. I think we are on the brink of, of a big war here, folks, coming. Uh, and I think it's going to probably happen before the election because I think once Trump gets into office, uh, praying that that actually happens, that uh, he, he'll shut all of this down. This isn't, this isn't what he's all about. Um, it just And people won't mess with Trump. They just know that uh, he's not going to play around. So uh, I see the Ukraine thing going away if he gets in the office. And the deep state can't afford to have that happen. So uh, I think we're in a very compressed state, and I do think that we may see, I still think we're going to see a spring uh, offensive taking shape just based on the chatter, okay? Um, and now, we're going to look at the details, and I'll show you what's going on, but we'll start off here over in Skyglass, as always. And um, let's see, looking at 213 aircraft up currently in the sky, that's military only. We're going to just kind of uh, shred this a bit and just take a closer look at what it actually makes up. Remember, just because there's a lot in the sky doesn't mean that it is something going on, right? There, are, It's a nice flying day. The weather here in Texas, at least on the north end, not down by Houston, but up here where they do most of the flying is, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice out. So, um, but let's look, we got uh, 100 T, uh, sorry, Tex 2s, 59 EC45s and 19 T38s, which would all be trainers for the most part. So um, anyway, that alone, you strip that out, that brings us to a total of 213 up. Interesting thing, H60s. Just take a gander at uh, what we have uh, along the East Coast. This area here, probably some training activity. Kind of hard to separate that. But uh, all of this other stuff, eh, it's pretty, pretty active, right? And then let's go over here to the air refuelers, 23 KC-135s, and uh, pretty active. I mean, that's a, yeah, that may be kind of a baseline number. Let's see how many of the 767 Pegasus we bring those in. There's eight of those. So, yeah, you're sitting around 30. That is slightly elevated to what we normally would see. We'll take those out. Then at the C-17 traffic, look at this up in the northeast. Just insane. 20 of those up, all right? All right, now let's look at our watch list and what is that telling us? Uh, the interesting thing, I've left, uh, let's see, I've taken out the H60s just because that's 40 uh, we've just talked about, but uh, I've also taken out the aerial survey flights. And uh, as you can see, let me button this thing up and uh, we'll get into the deets. E6, Takamo, and then we got C, that's going to be the doomsday plane. They look to be all kind of jumping up together. Another E6 took off just a little bit before them. So we've got two E6, uh, one E3 Century. That's an AWACS. It's kind of in that panhandle area. And then, of course, we've got, uh, that's a Lasai Aviation. And let's see what else we got on our screen here that catches the eye. That's the DOJ, right? Looks like they're just getting airborne, as is the that is homeland security right there um i don't know why it's giving me a different feed in my picture every time i click on this it wants to give me a e6 tacomo but that is uh it's a little g5 that uh old daddy warbucks flies around so uh but then we get into this side of it over to europe notice you got r135s e3 centuries that are pretty busy and then we've got some of the little electronic suite some italian ones and uh, another Lasai Aviation, right? That's an Intel gathering aircraft there over Romania. Go a little further south, a lot of C-17s, some air refuelers, uh, but pretty pretty heavy flow of C-17 traffic, which also is a good indicator that uh, they're moving military equipment around um, to those areas, right? So, okay, Intel community. Uh, notice you got a transition, looks to be coming out of Fort Hood, headed northbound. And then, of course, we have uh, this one. I just still find it interesting. We seem to be very interested in something either north or south of that 
little shoelace back and forth, right? Remember, these are side-looking aircraft. So as they're flying, they're looking out the sides, gra- gathering intel. Uh, the swamp looks like they've got a little bit of work going on up there in the brown zone. And then uh, stuff in and out of Savannah. Now, uh, the other piece, too, notice this is a transition. So we've got one that either is coming or going into England, probably adding two, if I had to guess. And then the usual suspects coming out of Constanta, uh, over Romania, headed northbound up towards Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, etc. Then we get down a little further south and just notice Israel is hot and heavy. Their stuff has not let up on any level whatsoever. So, all right, that's going to be your intel side. Let's go take a look at the AWACS. And uh, this is interesting. A couple men in the middles down near uh, Marseille. Uh, just notice that, uh, you know, that's southern France. France is one that's, that's doing a lot of chatter right now about going to war. Southern Germany, northern Germany, and um, just those, a lot of the man in the middle circles as the uh, advanced early warning system does its other things that it does. And then we'll jump over here to Japan. I do see one that got airborne. It's kind of, uh, I don't know which direction that was headed, north or south. Could be out over the Sea of Japan. Uh, but uh, could also have been headed south. And then the normal E-7 aircraft off of the eastern coast of Australia. All right. And then just notice a uh, little box, kind of strange, headed down south. That's that danger area we typically watch. So uh, that tells you that they are probably looking at things that are going past them, like uh, maybe some Club Ks that they're worried about, right? All right, R-135, same areas as always, kind of looking into uh, Belarus and Russia and uh, Ukraine and Crimea, right? And then uh, taking off out of Okinawa, headed northbound again up towards the Sea of Japan. Same kind of general location. We saw the AWACS, right? So I am seeing a a slight uptick happening over in the Asian Pacific, uh, my guess is it's a contingency force. It's to keep things from spreading further than than what they really need to be. But uh, U.S. looked the same as always, all right? Okay, let's talk C-17 traffic. And uh, the big thing here is just notice how thick the traces are coming in and out of Ramstein, right? Notice also pretty thick trace going into Bahrain. Kuwait, a little, little one popping in and out of there. I see some broken traces coming out of the UAE and Qatar, but again, look how thick this is. Ramstein definitely is, is the processing center. Okay. Over the United States, and uh, the interesting one for me is this one headed down the U.S. Virgin Islands, as always. I think they're setting up a contingency location uh, if things go south. And then, of course, Bogota, Colombia, probably dropping off some kits to help people get through the Darien Gap, et cetera, as they come across. Broken Trace is headed out to the Asian Pacific side of the house. Some more stuff headed up to Anchorage, Alaska, or coming out of Anchorage, Alaska, and uh, the usual spots. Uh, the uptick, if you keep in track, C-17 is 231. That's, that's up from the last time we got together. So air refuelers, see these long traces? This tells me, and I don't think that's a good feed right there. I really don't. I think that's, that's bad data. Uh, this piece, broken trace, that's probably good data. That's headed out to the Asian Pacific side of the house. But uh, very frequent um, air refuelers definitely looks to be busier than it was last time we got together. I forgot to grab the number on that, but I would imagine it's up over 300. Um, I just noticed, though, the stuff headed down. looks like a broken trace headed either down towards Guantanamo, maybe Puerto Rico, or even the Virgin Islands. That's Terra Sierra, right? Um, that's a fuel stop usually. And then these are marshalling patterns you see scattered out over Europe and then headed up kind of towards uh, the northern end of Norway there. And then notice the stuff in and out of Kuwait, right? Big uptick. Uh, Some activity there in and out of Greece. But again, this is going to be your air refuelers, right? And again, I don't think those traces running straight line across are anything. Uh, Do notice we do have a little bit of stuff going on here in Japan. Okinawa, um, that looks to be near Cambodia. I think that's near Cambodia. Look like a little bit of stuff over here in the Philippines. 
right? And then down to Australia, I see a little bit of stuff there on the East Coast. All right, back to our mini. Let's get into the deets So what's uh, happening out there. First up, let's talk of the immigrant machine. It's going to be swift air. Just notice how many are coming to the interior of the United States. And then how many are flying down here to the central side of the house, right? And also into looks to be Mexico City uh, or somewhere in the, in the mix of that. But um, nonetheless, they're not bringing people out of the country, all right? I can tell you that. It's all coming in. All of this right here is uh, they're just feeding the machine. And it hasn't let up, all right? Okay, this one I do see as... Uh, to me, this is a smoking gun. It's very, very obvious what has happened here. Look, if you were to uh, accidentally lose the paperwork or forget to file, you know, 10 cases or even 100 cases, um, you know, you'd go out ah, maybe it was an accident or an oversight or somebody forgot to do something in time, whatever. I get it. It's the government, right? They're, they're inefficient. Uh, they're like the, you know, um, the DOT, when you get in there trying to get your driver's license on steroids, okay? 200,000 deportation cases, however, that is not a mistake. That is not an accident. That is on purpose. That's somebody taking a stack and basically stuffing it in the can, all right? Uh, so, um, but they failed to file the paperwork. Illegal immigrations effectively left in legal limbo without any way to pursue asylum. So uh, it closes the door on the asylum, but I have a feeling they're going to waive all of that anyway. But 200,000 cases. I mean, come on, folks. Give me a break. All right. Now, we talked about this as well, right? This, uh, we see an uptick and a spike all around the world, but here in the United States as well, uh, in terms of measles in terms of other things that are outbreak. Uh, you got, you know, you've got uh, whooping cough and just everything. It's just insane, but it is because you're stirring everything up, okay? CDC issues a measles alert uh, as 2024 cases have already equaled all of 2023. Let that sink in, folks. We're two months into the year, and we have already equaled everything that happened the whole entire previous year behind us. So that is not a good sign, and, uh, you know, this is just... Again, it has to do with letting people in your country. All right? It doesn't stop there, though. We've seen this dude showing up a multitude of times at Capitol Hill talking about uh, we're seeing all these red flags that have to do with uh, potential attacks on the United States, yet we are doing nothing to stop them coming across our border. In fact, we are incentivizing them to come across the border, and then we're bringing them into all of our cities. That's treason. OK, that uh, they're breaking the law. And so uh, this is uh, where we are as a nation. And uh, this is not going to change as long as the current administration is in. And uh, I will tell you that uh, if if Trump doesn't get in, we are going to have one heck of a dilemma on our hands here as we the people are going to have to take care of business. Right. Uh, it's they're going to leave us no other choice. So check this out. The Biden administration warns states of possible attacks on water systems by foreign attackers. These attacks have the potential to disrupt the critical lifeline of clean and safe drinking water. So we will watch the water, uh, but that is not good by any means. All right, so let's move on. All right, here we go. Flashbang schedule. Not that anybody cares, uh, but he is finally getting out of Dodge here. He's headed down south into Houston. Uh, we jump over here onto the board. You can see this is the reason that is red is because it is active. He is there. Uh, in fact, I think he just got airborne. Uh, and then he's headed down here into this, which is uh, looks to be a lovely set of thunderstorms and lightning. So enjoy that flight, my man. All right. Then here we've got, uh, the, of course, the regular senior living center. But it looks like he's headed home this weekend. That's what that appears to be. All right. Or at least headed to uh, the city of brotherly love. Let's move on. All right. Now, this right here, that's a NOAA box that's going to be teal related, has to do with all of the atmospheric rivers coming in. And uh, so they are studying them. All right. 
but then here, these are the danger boxes. Remember, we're seeing the flights come out here. Everything from air refuelers to AWACS to R-135s. You name it, they are doing it out here. This is probably a very big concern for them because all it takes is somebody to, to bring in some Club Ks uh, or just park them out here off the coastline, and uh, it is game on like Donkey Kong, all right? These look to be missile boxes out here, right? I'll click on one just to validate that, but uh, yeah, surface and above, so there is no, um, looks like a ceiling on this at all, but uh, restricted in place just as I kind of go through this. I don't see anything that says missile, but they it certainly looks like that, all right? So, okay. Exit out of that. Let's back up. Let's see if we got any other boxes around the world that kind of catch our eye, uh, other than the regular stuff that we see on a, on you know every time we come in. Uh, it's just one big hot mess there. This one's an, an interesting box. Kind of runs the entire length of the border. Uh, don't know what that is about, but then we get down here. This let's see if this is still. I've uh, been watching weather modification. There it is, right there again. All right, weather modification technology flight. So uh, you have it, right? We talk about it all the time. So they're trying to mess with the weather down here. Let's uh, see what happens. Okay. Now let's talk Biggs Army Airfield, and then we'll get into some more news. Uh, but I just wanted to point out, just notice the um, the spas coming in from Tucson. That is that is more than likely right there. Immigrant-related, Perot Field, that's probably troop-related. This is probably troop-related. And this is probably troop related 747s. And then you get down a little further, Delta Airlines coming in from Hartsfield. That is probably a deadhead flight coming out of Atlanta. Where does it go from here? I don't know. Let's we'll go up and see if we can find it. Atlas Air is headed down to Fort Hood. And a little further down, it looks like that one is headed to Smyrna, Tennessee. So that's probably taking um, some illegals into Smyrna, Tennessee. Two Omni flights look to be headed to Rochester, New York. And, uh, I, you know, now I, the more I think about that, maybe it came inbound as, as a troop transport, but I'm thinking these are probably immigrant-related, uh, taking folks up to Rochester. And then, of course, this one headed to Frankfurt. That's a 747, so that's a big one, right? And then over onto this side of the house as we get into Dover, uh, just pointing this one out, uh, 747 leaving for RZE Poland. That's a forward operating base, okay? Then we get into Ramstein. See what's coming in. 777 from Baltimore, that's troops. 747 coming in from RZE. More than likely, that dropped off troops and is just basically coming back into uh, this location. Um, but then you've got, again, more, uh, more flights. There's some German Air Force stuff in there, more Camber flights. That one's coming out of Egypt. Good over here, National Cargo, destination unknown. Down a little further, C-17, looks like a reach flight, German Air Force. Uh, let's go a little further, more Camber flights, more German Air Force. That's a C-130, I believe, the Valor, and German Air Force. So you can see Ramstein is very active, as we saw with the C-17 uh, flight traces, Okay. RZE Poland, all right? This is going to be your forward operating base. This is Ukraine, all right? So when things go hot, they're going to be feeding a lot of that out of this location, as well as down in Romania and Bulgaria. But let's go down the board here for just a second and show you what has been showing up. 747 coming out of uh, eh, Newfoundland, right? So that, probably troops. German Air Force out of Berlin, Camber flight coming out of Portsmouth, 747. That probably has some M1s or something, as well as probably troops. So I'm seeing the heavy transports making their way back in. Again, uh, they announced probably a month ago that there was a major exercise happening. I don't believe these are part of the exercise. I don't believe these are part of a rotation. I believe we are sta staffing up and uh, putting assets in play uh, to basically go hot here in uh, the coming months. If not, I do believe a spring offensive. If they don't do a spring offensive, it's because they couldn't get their act together fast enough to pull it off. But let's see what happens. Nonetheless, um, again, look, this one leaves, goes to Hong Kong. All right, so that's probably going back into the rotation, picking up some stuff. And then we go further down the line. 
Um, that is the Netherlands Air Force. Don't see them too often bouncing in. German Air Force, Camber Flight, Atlas Air, right? Uh, these are departing, right? But just uh, we're seeing them on the board, so you know you got uh, assets on the ground. I did see an Antonov on here as well. That has since dropped off, uh, but that is a very, very large, very large, largest in the world uh, cargo aircraft, okay? So anyway, RZE looks to be very active and busy. Now let's take a look at what's happening other than the stuff coming and going in the airports. Look at this. And this is why I say um, this, it's, I think it's getting ready to go hot. Now, the interesting piece to this and something I don't understand, maybe the folks that have ever been deployed over there into the European side, at least on the Eastern front, um, the color of the camo is desert, which to me, that looks like that would be a flow headed into somewhere in the Middle East. Um, but you can see, look at this, U.S. heavy infantry armors southeastern Europe, thousands of combat vehicles, Abrams, uh, the Bradleys, those are all on there, deployed by the Americans, calling us right out. Uh, but you can see them, right, getting unloaded off of this cargo, uh, military cargo ship. And, uh, but they're desert, uh, desert tan. So that part I don't understand. I guess maybe they didn't have time to paint them, or maybe they don't care. Maybe, I don't know. If this is going into Ukraine uh, as the ultimate location, it sure doesn't seem like they would have uh, the right camo to fight in that environment. But again, um, I'm not an Army guy, and uh, I don't understand all of that. <laughs> so uh, I will just defer to uh, the experts that are out there. All right, but... Uh, so it's here the last move to Europe uh, of the 3rd Armored Brigade and the 4th Infantry Division, whose numbers uh, amount to almost 3,800 soldiers. Uh, that came in March of 2022. So it's been kind of a hot minute. We're in now March 2024, so that's two years. But um, they go into some of the numbers here of what has been coming off of the ship. Right? It doesn't stop there, though. Look at this. I'm going to just play this video. Let me back it up just a little bit. This is over on Twitter. And uh, just to give them some credit, uh, simply, simplicicus, or <laughs> anyway, a uh, little words out for you this morning. Go with your breakfast. All right. Uh, so let's, let's uh, just take a gander at what's coming through on this train. This has been vetted. It looks to be legit. It's not something that was placed uh, by somebody else, um, but uh, it doesn't seem like it wants to play for us. Let me just hit a refresh on here. Here you go. All right. Um, but as it comes through, notice they look identical to what we just saw on the ship coming out in, uh, coming out of France. Okay. Same stuff, same kind of equipment. Now I did notice there are, and looks to be some red crosses on here. So that means they're medical vehicles as well. And, uh, not a super long train, but it just adds to everything that's in the quiver there that we're seeing in theater. All right. Now look at this. Romania's airfield trans, uh, transformation into a giant NATO base is underway. They're saying this is actually going to double the size of the footprint at Ramstein. Here's an aerial view. That's current. Right? It hasn't been uh, flexed just quite yet, but uh, they're saying just over $2.7 billion uh, is being invested in this. It's the Romanian Air Force 57th Air Base. That's the location. Of course, U.S. and NATO assets in there, um, but... You can see location right here. This is uh, this is the Black Sea. This is Crimea, right? Constanta, just to the uh, uh, north of that. Sorry, right here, very very close to Constanta, actually, which is a major port. Remember, you got pinch points here in Istanbul, and as well as right here. Um, if things go go hot as we expect, I would imagine because Turkey is part of NATO. Uh, somebody's going to try to force their hands and stopping everything flowing in and out of this other than probably NATO assets uh, because this is the way that the Russians support and uh, push everything into Crimea as well as Russia, right? It's a big oil flow for them too. All right, there is that aspect. Now let's talk Russia. Let's see what, uh, what exactly is happening um, with respect to that. Let's see, Russian... Pledges two new ground armies and ominous warning to the West. Uh, just to give you kind of some numbers of what they're talking about doing. 
they said that uh, for this year that um, they're going to have uh, 14 d- divisions as well as 16 br- brigades uh, by the end of this year. So are we going to try and catch them on their heels uh, with the spring offensive before these guys get, you know, boots on the ground? Eh, probably it'd be a smart thing to do in a dumb kind of way. But anyway, all right. So this one as well, right? Here is Macron doubling down. Says the French army says they are prepared for the toughest of engagements. So uh, we've seen a lot of chatter and uh, rhetoric coming out of Macron. And uh, he is uh, says he's ready. So uh, we see it coming from uh, the Polish. We see it coming from the Germans, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go over here to our headlines real fast. I did want to point this out too, just to add to what we've already talked about in terms of um, the, the increase in flow. Um, this piece, as we get into the camber flights, this was from yesterday, all right? Uh, just notice I've not seen these kind of camber numbers in a hot minute. Uh, that, uh, you can see on the board, that was just one of the rotations, okay? So this thing cycled again after this, but uh, very heavy, very active into Europe and the Middle East, all right? So Camber flights, that's U.S. Transportation Command. That's going to be, you know, precious cargo. So it's everything from soldiers to uh, to major combat systems, all right? So back over here, we talk about the French Army. Now check this out. Germany and Poland to lead the new armored coalition for Ukraine. Now I just showed you all of the stuff that's coming off the ships, that's on the trains, that's uh, we're talking about the movement of the C-17s and the and the uh, 747s that are contractor uh, charter flights moving this equipment and soldiers. It's all coming in. Again, I don't think this is part of an exercise. I don't think this is part of a rotation, right? I think this is a, a pushing all the chips on the board and uh, getting ready to be on like Donkey Kong. So Germany, Poland to lead new armor coalition for Ukraine. Uh, they said they've agreed to a, uh, create a coalition that will supply armored vehicles to the Ukrainian defense forces. So they're going to feed the machine. So they're, they're, these guys are already starting to put quarters and nickels back in the machine. Um, but uh, it says here, just to not lose sight of it, our Bohico moment, the U.S. has also promised $300 million in air defense missiles, artillery rounds. That's 155 Mike Mike and armor systems. All right. Now, moving over here, national cargo, just important to show you where these guys are flying. Just notice this one I thought was kind of a weird uh, coming out of, uh, where is that coming out of? Uh, Barisol. All right. Uh, Then you got one out of Ramstein, one out of Houston, and that's headed to San Diego. I've never really seen them come out of Houston going to San Diego. So that is kind of an interesting flight. Could be this one right here could be immigrant related. Remember that um, they are also they have contracts for DoD, but they also serve many masters. Same thing with Omni, right? All right, this is your Royal Air Force, Royal Transport. All right, and uh, just notice that one headed down to San Juan, Puerto Rico, out of Terceira. Um, actually, I say that's Terceira. Yeah, that's Terceira. Uh, but you got one also coming into the U.S. and several coming out of Europe. That one is headed, that looked to be Cyprus, uh, but I don't see the aircraft associated with that. All right, pay attention to this one. I've told you many, many times that the United States, what we're doing is we're taking people out of Gaza, taking them out of the West Bank, and uh, we're sending them over to places like uh, Bahrain and Qatar and UAE, and then, or Kuwait, and then we're putting them on transports and or commercial flights and sending them to the United States. We also send them in through Ramstein. They get processed, put on commercial flights, as well as C-17s, and brought to the United States. All right? So this is a very, very big coordinated logistics effort. All right? So this, I think, BB is basically just uh, shining a little light. Uh, you have to read between the lines on this one because uh, he's telling us what they're doing. Right, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reportedly suggested that the new U.S.-built makeshift port off of Gaza, uh, which was installed to help ship aid to the besieged enclave, 
could be used to deport Palestinians. Yes, that is what's happening, right? I guarantee you they're going to put these folks on ships. They'll bring them into Cyprus, put them on airplanes, all right? Just pay attention because they're bringing them here to the United States. Okay, this is El Gora, all right? has nothing to do with Al Gora. Uh, this is El Gora. This was supposedly uh, a, a multinational military base, but the runway has been closed down. It's not any longer because that right there is a U.S. asset landing, taking off. It's a BE-20 in and out of the location. Probably base commander if I had to guess. Okay, and then this one, U.S. Transportation Command. Look at this as we look at the command flights. Uh, but this one I thought was interesting because it came out of Israel and was headed uh, out of the country uh, right here. Let me just show you this. So it came out of uh, Nevatim, Israel, and is headed to Dubai. Wouldn't be surprised. I will tell you this. It's not a Jewish person, all right? That is more than likely a Muslim that they are taking um, or Muslims that they are taking out of this spot and bringing them over here to a little safe haven, all right? Back over to the Cambers, I showed you uh, these flights, and I said, big, big, big uptick. That was yesterday, all right? Uh, going back over here, you go down to the board, you can see four of them on the board right now. That has uh, since cycled. It's in between the next leg, uh, but uh, just a ton of things coming out of various locations um, headed into either EU or uh, the Middle East. All right. And then this would be your Omni flights. This, I, that's certainly, I think that's probably moving or coming down to collect some migrants here. That's headed into Alliance, Fort Worth. Uh, this one coming out of Hawaii, headed out to Guam. All right. And uh, I think that's important. I don't see us, I mean, I, I can see them starting to put some uh, legs to this on the Asian front, even though they've been taken away for a very long time. But I do think it is nothing more than a containment to make sure that when China takes Taiwan, that it doesn't spread to anywhere else. So we've got forces in Japan and Philippines and Southeast Asia, uh, you know, over here in Cambodia, et cetera, right? Um, I think they're, this, they're there to, to make sure that, that uh, China doesn't do anything stupid beyond what, uh, you know, the Taiwan piece. So. All right, listen, that is going to do it for our sit rep today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, remember, if you're on Patreon, you've got two uh, Patreon-exclusive things coming to you this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, which would be the Monkey Minute, as well as our Under the Radar, where we're going to look at uh, flights that we uh, typically don't get an opportunity to look at during our regular show. So you guys keep that powder dry. Stay frosty. We'll see you soon. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. You can check out the latest gear and products by selecting a QR code on your screen now or go to monkeyworksus.com.